Okay, take it away, Jack. And one of the things we want to talk today about was the framework for performance management. And as you see in this case, um, the old um, systems to silos type approach was refreshed in 2013. Uh, everything was kept inside, but you notice really the key things on the outside when we asked people really what made a performance management system work. Well, one of the things was visible leadership. And if the leadership isn't behind it, it's not going anywhere. You need to be focused on the customer and make sure that the standards and performance measures you use and reporting of progress focus on how the customer is perceiving how the services are being delivered. And then also within the organization, you need a culture of quality, one where people can see the results of using the data. Decisions are made using data. Analysis is made using data. And there's regular reporting cycles. And the other thing is, too, that the measures and the things that we are doing align to our strategy to make improvements for the long term. So as we go to the next slide here, can you move it? Okay. One of the things we want to look at here is what is a good framework? Well, we all use, to some extent, the plan, do, check, act cycle. And really, in this case, when we plan, really we're getting the trip, the ship, getting the strategic plan, the operating plan, the financial plan, the budget, they all come together. And hopefully what they're doing is looking down at expectations of the program and policy implementation. And then we want to make sure we're checking, getting performance management, reporting, and we're analyzing the results. So throughout the uh, turning point model, this is where reporting of progress is coming in, and we have data. And data turns to information when the leadership and the management analyze it and make information out of it and then make decisions, performance-based decision-making, to make changes to improve the results. Then we go to the next slide. And again, when we view it from different parts of the system, again, this triangle, we look at the top, you know, we have a vision and mission. And as we get down through the organization, looking at the various levels, you know, the trip, the ship, strategic plan, operating plan, performance budgets with negotiated targets. And then we have programs and services that are delivering it. So we start out usually with a 30,000 foot view and then we hit the ground. And throughout it all, the performance management system should be measuring things that make this a reality. And that all the way down, and we lost the slides again. It looks like we did. Um, oh, there it is. So again, you know, as we look at this, we want to make sure that things are aligned. So as we have program service, project initiatives, their measurements align to the performance budget, align to the operating plan, and so forth. So we go to the next slide. And as Dilbert always says, you know, we always talk in companies about goals. You know, everybody needs goals. We have division goals, department goals, district goals, personal goals, affiliate goals. And, they, you know, he says we're going to attend a four-hour training session on how to write goals. Every week we'll report on how you're doing compared to your goals. Put it in a giant database. And Dilbert always has to, you know, downsize everything and say, you know, well, the size and complexity will make the database impossible to know what's really happening. And that's why we'll base your raises on what you look like. And, of course, Alice in this case, well, he's always got to say, bummer for you. So the next one. And, again, we talked about these things. When you refresh your performance management, we focus on really looking at that outer ring of the turning point model that was refreshed. Visible leadership, I won't go back over that. Transparency, making sure you know and everybody knows where the data is coming from and how we're going to use it. Because the people feel in the organization that the data is going to be used against them and there's going to be punishment, you won't get the right figures. Deming pointed that out a long time ago. And we talked about the other three, aligning to the strategy, making sure that really commit, strengthens that commitment to the culture of quality. And again, the customer is our main focus. Next one. So some of the things we would suggest, you know, do a regular review of your performance management system. The question I always ask people is, do you do anything with the data you collected and charted? You know, a lot of people collect it and just keep it. 
what happens when you have a performance management review meeting? Is it something you look forward to? And if it isn't, what would make it so? And is the data reported in a way that all have access, either as a presentation, a dashboard, or report? And at least annually, make sure that you go through the performance management team members and determine whether these measures you're using are the best. Do they report the attendant outcome? And you know, make sure you're getting reports of management, ask simple questions. What happened the last quarter, the last week? What happened yesterday to improve the customer's experience? What are you going to do based on the data? Do you have any QI projects you're going to consider to implement based on that data? And at least annually ask people or quarterly, what improvements are you most proud of that you've made in your department division program over the last quarter, whatever time period, based on data? Go ahead. So again, when you do a performance management system, I always recommend you have some type of a team. Because if you don't, the DNA of the performance management won't be focused and things sort of slip and slide. But you need a team that's constantly looking at what's the purpose of this performance management system. Are we accomplishing what we want to achieve today? What about the future? Functional requirements. What's it supposed to do? What capabilities must it have? Performance requirement. Does a performance function? Are the users getting what they want from the system? And we understand what the data semantics are in this case. Everybody understand the definitions. Again, the environmental requirements. How are we working? Under what conditions does the system have to work to meet its performance goals? And do we have enough budget? Do we have the staffing, the licensing, the operating, the upgrade costs for the system? Too often we cut these parts of the system's budget, and then we wonder why it isn't working effectively in the long run. Go ahead. Oops. So, for some of the things I mentioned, once a year, you know, match up two program managers from different programs. Ask them meet before the meeting. Review each other's performance data. What did they learn about it? And how might together in the future? Community partners, good to bring them in. Sit in as guests. What do they think about how the agency is reporting process? If it isn't visible in the agency, nobody's going to know about it. Post the goals. Have a communication campaign. Be clear about the purpose. And celebrate successes, even minor ones. People achieve a little bit, celebrate the successes as you go forward. Because it helps to keep it fresh. Everybody likes celebrations. Go ahead. And again, lessons we've learned. Start small. Few measures in each department. Make sure people be distinguish between strategic measures and grant measures. Align to the strategic objectives. Does everything roll up? Are you using the data? Are you taking action? And keep emphasizing the use of performance information. Show examples in the organization where people use data to make improvement. The other thing is you can't have too much data. It can be data rich and never make a decision. Review things every six months. Are these the right measures? Are they the right things that we're using to make sure we keep in current? Because our environment changes, we need to make sure that the performance management measures change with it. Go ahead. So one of the things we talk about, if you look at the inside, you know, we collect raw data. However, we do it daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. The other thing is we've got to transform it, make it visual, plot the data. And we've got to get it information, customers, process, suppliers, contractors, understand who we're measuring and what's going on. And then the outer ring, you know, we talk about in this case, action. So we have all of this, we've got information, we need to take action, and also make quality improvements based on the information that we have. Good. And above all, we've learned, keep it simple and usable. Don't make it so complex, so overwhelming, so complicated to collect that nobody uses it. Because you'll find after a while, it just goes away by itself. So keep it simple. Okay. And, you know, a very simple one like this, you know, we have objectives, measures, we have the fab domain, that's a good thing to keep it going. What did the previous period look at? What does the current one look at? You know, how are we trending in this case, up or down? What's the target? And then we can have a QI plan if we're going to make some improvements. It's a simple dashboard, you can do this in Excel. Okay, next one. 
Thank you so much, Jack, uh, for that great presentation. And thanks to all of you for sticking with us as we uh, try to tackle these technology complications. I think we've all been there, um, but hopefully we're, we're, we've are we got smooth sailing from now on. Um, we'd like to welcome our next panelist, um, Tammy Dillman from Central Valley Health District, um, to share her story. Tammy, are you there? I am. Thank you very much. It's great to be here today to share our story. about performance management frontier style, and certainly a frontier represents uncharted territory. North Dakota is a frontier state, often referred to as that because of its sparse population and wide geographic area. But for performance management, um, for us, we are certainly challenged to explore it. And so we know, like, wherever you are in the country or in your process, these are challenging times for public health with limited resources, whether it's dollars or people. But we've um, enjoy this evolution that we've had. We work always to continuously improve the improvement and really connect those pieces together. So um, I've been in our health department here for about 14 years, finance director since 2008, and accreditation coordinator since 2013. So our journey really began when we became a beta site in 2009, and it continues today as we are an accredited health department, the first in our state. And I couldn't agree with I couldn't agree more with what Jack said about leadership. I mean, we've had excellent leadership at our organization from our administrator all the way down to our staff who are always willing to pitch in and work together to get to where we want to go. So I would add to that that you need to use what you have. You need to share and engage, not only in your organization, but beyond that, and do it every day. Um, know where you are, where you want to go, and formulate for how you want to get there, and certainly that's what we've done and will continue to do. So next slide, please. If you're not familiar with public health in North Dakota, we have multi-county districts in the west, and as you move east, we see single county health departments. We're decentralized for our system. We have 28 local public health departments that serve our 53 counties, and 40% of those serve populations less than 5,000. So you can see there in the circle our jurisdiction, Sussman and Logan counties in our southeast central um, part of the state. Next slide. Our funding comes from a variety of sources. The majority is federal, although we have increased local funding, and we've worked hard to do that. For every dollar in local money that we receive, we bring back about $3 in money from state or federal sources. Next slide. So this is us, our two counties. You can see our main administrative office there, our office building with our name on it in Stutzman County. Jamestown serves 15,000 people. And our two locations in Logan County, and Logan County has about 2,000 people. And we have 23 staff, and you can see us there, or about 20 FTEs, our full-time equivalents. Next slide. The programs that we administer are listed here. State, federal, local sources fund these programs. And the programs in light blue are the ones that are regional. So beyond our two-county jurisdiction, there are six surrounding counties in our region. And our nursing and services include school nursing, immunizations, medication setups, home visits, Title III, which is an aging services program, worksite wellness, where we do things like lipid screening, cholesterol screening, foot care services, and sexual assault nurse examiners, which we partner with our local hospital to do. Next slide. In addition to that, since 2014, we've been working on substance abuse prevention, focusing on underage drinking and adult binge drinking, a Million Hearts initiative that our state is engaged in, sponsored by AFTO, focusing on stroke prevention, blood pressure control, and hypertension. We have a prevention block grant to do our community health assessment, community health improvement planning coordination, and then our regional network, which is that partnership we have with our six other local health departments in our eight county region where we've been working on improving immunization rates and other operational type efficiencies for local health departments. Next slide. 
So from our beta site experience, we had a plan, we knew what we wanted to do and how to get there, and we really had many takeaways from that experience. Administration and finance were areas of strength for our agency, so we drew from that. In North Dakota, most of the program and financial reports are submitted through the State Health Department's program reporting system. And you should be able to see the screenshots here for that, the home page where all the contracts are. And then for each one, we have a re request for reimbursement area and also possibly a program or a progress report area. Not all of the programs utilize that, but some of them do. And so that's been effective for us. Central Valley has always been a financially sound local health department, and we received compliments during the beta site process for our utilization of PRS in, co in conjunction with our monthly financial statement reporting to our local board of health, where we detail out revenue and expenditures by program using cost centers. And through our process for the beta site, we also affirmed that we had considerable work to do in the areas of strategic planning, CHA and CHIP, which are the prerequisites for accreditation, and performance management overall. But we wanted to link everything together, and we've been able to do that. Next slide. So it wasn't about just pre um, getting those prerequisites completed just to do them, to check them off. We really wanted to make them meaningful. And we were able to do that. The CHA and the CHIP was instrumental in helping us move the needle. And we couldn't have done that without the support of our community partners. So we applied and were selected to co-lead the process with our local hospital, Jamestown Regional Medical Center. After completing that process for the demonstration site, uh, one of 12 in the country, we were one of only two sites of the 12 to get subsequent funding. And that came from Blue Cross Blue Shield, North Dakota, to work on obesity and physical activity. So we were able to, through that process, establish some common ground affirm where we were, and then build and strengthen our relationships so that we could all get to where we wanted to go together. And again, um, it seems daunting, but again, it's, it's key to just start and just don't wait, just do it. So next slide. Our performance management system is supported um, by, it's the same framework that Jack described, and it's supported by our workforce development plan, our QI plan, and our strategic plan. So we have four steps, same as Jack went over, and these are the pieces of it which we'll walk through here. So key for us was to connect it, and we used the graphic, the stool, to really um, put a visual for our staff so that they could see how all of this is connected and how it pertains to them, and that's key as well. So next slide. The first aspect, performance standards, what this means for us is our strategic plan. We focus on that internally and externally. So our strategic plan is our driver, and so is our community health assessment for our community. Um, these are important facets of our community health partnership group that was formed as a cross-cutting, um, all area reaching um, facet of our 2012 community health assessment process and improvement plan process, which we repeated in 2015. Next slide. Here are some snips from our strategic plan um, where we focus on this every year. We spend about a half day session with all of our staff and we have, we go through together and we review what we have. If we have to do a SWOT from the start, from scratch, we do that. We formulate goals or we review them um, and objectives and we give our, we rate ourselves. How are we doing here? Are we making progress? What needs to be changed? Um, if we need to scrap some things, we scrap them or we rework them um, in order to get to um, our strategic, um, accomplish our strategic goals. And then we share that with our local board of health. Next slide. We keep it fresh with this process by delving deeper when we need to. And this year we did an Aspire survey um, to inspire each other and others um, to see, make sure that we have continuity between our staff and our board and our partners in the community um, and include succession planning there as well. Next slide. We measure by not just our strategic plan, but also by our community health improvement plan. We measure our program and fiscal process progress every month and again we bring that back up all the way up to the community health improvement plan community health improvement level next slide i've talked about sharing and engaging and our community health partnership is a huge part of that for us 
you can see here this slide showing all of the agencies that are part of that group. We meet every month here at our local health department um, for three reasons, to enhance efficiency of community connections, to decrease duplication of efforts, and improve awareness and health in the community, and share our results and our successes um, that we've all achieved together. And we have, on average, our attendance is 20 to 30 people, which we've been able to maintain since 2012 when we did the demonstration site process. Next slide. We have a shared vision, which is to be the healthiest communities in which to live, learn, work, and play. And next slide is our priority areas, which were agreed upon and approved in 2015. So the challenge with this is you don't always see um, the outcomes. It takes a long time to get there. But um, next slide shows our wins or our successes for each of those priority areas. And building upon what we have in place, the New Year New, Ch New You Challenge is a great example of that. This is a yearly wellness challenge sponsored by our local hospital. And you can see here our results for this past year where we achieved wins in terms of nutrition, physical activity. Next week, the end of next week, we have a groundbreaking for the Two, years, Two Rivers Activity Center, which is a community recreational facility that passed by special election vote. So that's very exciting for Jamestown. It's been many years um, in the works. A lot of work has gone into making that happen. And it's great that our community made that a reality or chose to. Um, last month, we also applied for a grant to improve walkability in our community, to, which involves finishing and marking walking paths and trails. Next slide. We've seen our vacancy rate for housing um, come up, which is an improvement. We've seen an Are You Prepared booklet. We've worked with that. Our health department was part of that process to get that for all Stutzman County residents that was mailed out in December, and our bus stop is open, which is great. Next slide, we've also seen access to care improvements in terms of cost and adequacy of health insurance. We have providers, more providers in our community. We have better access at a lot of our clinics in our community, and our hospital and our health department have been recognized by accrediting bodies for performance. The Joint Commission and the Public Health Accreditation Board with Central Valley being accredited. Next slide. Workforce is also another area for employment. Our city approved and passed our Land Use and Transportation Act plan, and we've also had several agencies that are fully staffed for the first time in a while are nearly fully staffed. So you, you can't do the work without adequate personnel, and so that's great for our, those agencies. Next slide. When our CHP, our health partnership group, meets on the second Thursday of every month in our office, we not only monitor our progress or our TIP, but we also stay on top of emerging issues. And this has allowed us to work more closely with those partners, um, share what we're doing, so that we um, can make sure that our community is getting full advantage or accessing those resources. And we've also improved access to things like youth sports physicals when our clinics have had provider um, burden with um, getting people in on time. So it's great in a timely manner. So that's great that we've been able to do that. Next slide. Instead of focusing on what we can't do, we try to focus on those things that we can do. And a great example of that is the child abuse prevention awareness that we've been able to do this month in our art park, um, you, um, where we established a pinwheel garden to draw awareness to child abuse prevention. And that was a great event that was highlighted in our local newspaper, and they even did a video about it. So that was really great as well. Next slide. So we report on progress, we share what we've done, we learn from what we, those things that haven't gone well, and we do that also as an agency in our annual report. We share that with our Board of Health and our county commissions every year. We report on our CHIP on our website, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. We share our data and are with our health partners at our partnership group meetings, and we present um, through local media and websites, and we try to capitalize upon that and streamline that so that we're all sharing that information collectively as well. Next slide. Here's a snip from our annual report where we shared our data with our policymakers and our partners, as I've mentioned previously. Next slide is our website for our Community Health Partnership Group and our Facebook page. We've also organized sessions for legislators where we report on our progress 
we discuss challenges that we are facing, we let them share challenges that they have, and then we try to formulate solutions together. Next slide. And last but not least, quality improvement. And again, we try to keep this a part of our daily work, making it what we do every day, and also encouraging staff to share things that need to be improved. Some things don't rise to a full-blown QI cycle, um, but the QI plan and the workforce development plan are instrumental. Training and professional development are priorities for our staff because we know they're our most vital resource as an organization. And so our goal in implementing performance management includes in in incorporating pieces that feed, maintain that culture of QI that we worked hard to build. Next slide. An example of our QI accomplishments that were led by our administrator includes environmental health. Prior to 2009, environmental health matters were noted on yellow legal pads, which made it difficult to organize and track. This was an area that we've made a commitment to improve upon. Our QI team took action. And today, we have a much improved environmental health process. So again, not easy, but doable, completely doable. Next slide. Here's a screenshot of our tracking, which we will be improving upon again this year as we go live with a statewide tablet system for food inspections. Next slide. So aside from what we've done within our agency, we've also um, worked with our partners in our region, the other health departments. And in 2012, we were selected, along with three other networks in the region, to receive funding appropriated by our legislature to work collaboratively to increase the efficiency for public health service delivery. So there are our eight counties, as you can see, the population that we serve. Next slide. Here's our process. So as Jack indicated, what data do we have? What data do we need to use? And we try not to be overwhelmed by data, but that happens a lot. Um, we completed a gap anal analysis, which involved um, surveying our staff, surveying boards of Board of Health members or community partners, and then we also utilize the Public Health Uniform National Data System or funds um, to look at our financial performance and program areas. Uh, we worked with national consultants from Public Health Foundation for training and Louisiana State University for funds and NATO. We completed quality improvement sessions. We considered findings in our gap analysis report. We did a cost-benefit analysis, looked at state performance measures for a health department, state health department, created a QI plan, a work plan for performance management, and signed and executed the joint powers agreement. So um, next slide. We discovered that we are efficient and effective as evidenced by our administrative expenditures and total margin. Next slide. So we all know that success takes leadership commitment, partners, and hard work. So here we are at our training session, and a happy day when we signed, when the administrators signed the JPA. Next slide. So this is our performance management system. On paper, it's really, e it's simple, like Jack mentioned, but that's good because it's doable then, and it shows where we want to go, the steps we're going to take to get there, and how we measure that progress. Next slide. So nothing speaks better to keeping people motivated, like Jack mentioned, than results. And we've seen success in our regional uh, public health network where we've been focusing on immunization compliance rates. We've seen a 10% increase, an additional 433 kids in compliance with first dose immunizations. And here we're comparing um, December to June results. So all of the counties, we were able to move the needle, which is, was a great, um, great success for us to share. Next slide. So overall, it is possible. We accomplished our goal, and you can too. Our journey involved having a plan, breaking it down into doable steps, engaging and sharing with partners, and that makes it an even more meaningful journey. Um, don't try to go it alone. That's the main takeaway. And um, you'd be surprised what people will do if you ask and you include them in the process. So we hope you map and enjoy your incredible performance management journey as we have. Thank you so much, Tammy, for a great presentation. Um, I'm sure I can, everyone agrees that we learned a lot and it was a, a really uh, lovely depiction of how you guys have uh, found such great success. 
Um, I'd like to move on now to our next panelist, Robert Hines. Uh, joining us from Houston, uh, very rainy Houston, it sounds like. Um, Robert um, will be talking to us about performance management, um, and uh, he is the accreditation coordinator of the uh, the Houston Health Department there. So, Robert, um, take good it away. afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon and or morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Jack, Tammy, uh, for excellent presentations and allowing me to kind of close this out. And thank you, Public Health Foundation, for allowing me to kind of share some of the things that we've done. Quick disclaimer for everyone. Um, as was mentioned earlier, it is a little rainy here, and there is a storm going on outside right now. So if I happen to lose power or suddenly go dark, um, it's either because this, the storm has knocked out my communications or I just all of a sudden decided to go for a swim. So I hope that joke wasn't in too poor taste for anyone. Um, so, thank you for moving on to the next slide. Now, just a little bit about Houston. Um, um, pretty large jurisdiction. We have about 2.1 million people um, in the city over a land area of, of about 600 square miles, much of which is covered in water today, this week. Um, in the Harris County population, which we also get into uh, where Houston fits, we have about 4.1 million folks. And we tend to serve about 2.2 million people with our services in the health department. Um, we have about 1,200 staff um, as of my last count, so this number is a little bit low for today. But we're a fairly large health department, um, and we were accredited on December 12, 2014. Um, so uh, before we get into the next slide, I do want to say I agree with Tammy um, and Jack. Definitely leadership is, is key, and I like that Tammy ended on that note as well, um, because in order to be able to really engage staff promote any type of performance management or quality improvement within your department, you're going to have to have leadership buying and leadership support. Um, so a lot of people, when they begin to look at this, how are we going to get buy-in? Where do we start? How is it possible that we can get from wanting to do performance management and QI to um, a state where your, your department is operating like Tammy's, where you're actually using uh, that performance management tools, the QI, to impact your community's health? That's ultimately what we do this for. So a lot of people may be asking, okay, where do we start? Hopefully by the time I end this presentation, you'll have a little bit of understanding or an idea of kind of how you need to start, um, some good tips, and maybe some tools that you can potentially use along your journey. Next slide. So before we, before we began actually um, looking at or trying to in, install performance management, um, we began looking at, OK, where are we now as a department? What do we know about performance management? How are we operating with performance management? What are we doing to, to manage uh, performance? So the first thing we decided to do was create a baseline, kind of get some measures of exactly what's going on in the department. Two things we noticed that are not uncommon in health departments. There was no formalized structure. Uh, for performance management. There was some programmatic performance management going on. Typically, you'll have programs that have grant requirements um, that involve some performance management aspect. Um, certain types of other funding um, have a performance management aspect. And some, some managers, that's just their style, and so they install that in their programs. But it wasn't something that was formal at the time that we began looking at it across the department. And there was very little awareness of performance management. Generally, when you say performance management to someone, they think, okay, employee evaluation or end of year evaluation to assess how I did over with my job over this past year. Um, and you get that a lot. So we knew we had, this is what our baseline was, and we wanted to evolve from that baseline to our goals, which were a formalized structure that encouraged employees to participate in performance management on their own um, because they would recognize the value of it. Um, and then as, as a department to increase our awareness to make people excited about performance management, we rolled that into our accreditation processes and built um, and, and, you know, educated our staff that you can't really have an accredited health department or pursue accreditation without performance management and QI. They're, inter they're integral. Um, so those were our two goals. Next slide. Thank you. So the first thing we had to understand was we had to address our employee perception. Um, if you've seen any of our other 
presentations around employee engagement, staff engagement, marketing, those types of things, one of the first things we say is that you have to understand how people perceive the product that you're trying to sell to them. Um, if you don't understand where they are, what their perception is, then you won't address it correctly, number one. Number two, um, if you don't have a perception that you want to sell to them, they will develop their own perception and it will be hard for you to overcome that. So you have to build that brand for yourself. Determine what you want people to think, but you have to understand your staff first. So for us to understand, okay, what do people at the Houston Health Department think about performance management, we decided to use the Turning Point uh, Public Health Foundation Turning Point Self-Assessment. Uh, that helped us determine our baseline, kind of understand what our department's awareness of performance management was, and QI and accreditation, what type of experience was there, and help us determine how we best needed to approach of staff in order to gain some traction around QI, performance management, and accreditation. Um, and then we also knew that we had to train them. Once we figured out that their um, perception was more often than not negative, we knew, okay, we're not only going to have to address this, we're going to have to train people on exactly what it is, and we're going to have to brand it in a way that it makes people see the value of it. Next slide. So, we first did our performance management self-assessment in, in 2011, and we did this for three consecutive years just to see where our staff grew. I'm going to show you the first two years. Um, now, these slides are talking about the quality improvement performance management section of the uh, performance management system or the turning point uh, assessment. So I just have highlighted a few of the questions that I asked in that assessment. Do you have a process to improve quality or performance? Do you have a regular timetable for your processes? Um, do staff have authority to make changes to improve their performance? So you see, in the first year, uh, we had a, a lot of somewhat, very few yeses, and um, uh, some no's there also. So our goal was to, through training, staff engagement, change their perception, and shift some of those somewhat down. We wanted to really see an increase in yeses, a decrease in the no's, and shift the somewhat down. So if you look at the difference between 2011 and 2012, you can see um, for every one of these questions, you're typically going to have um, you're typically going to have less no's, more yeses, push the somewhat down. We had a little anomaly in that first year, right? Or uh, that first two questions uh, with people not understanding the process, but we attributed or or saying that we don't have a process, but we attributed that to people gaining knowledge about what an actual quality improvement process. A performance improvement process is. Once people were more knowledgeable after we had gone out and trained them, they understood, hey, we actually don't have this. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. Next slide, please. These are the three other questions uh, that were asked just to give you guys uh, more of an idea of exactly what happens um, with this assessment. Is, is there a process uh, for coordinating QI performance management? Or is the training available to, to managers and staff? We created performance management and QI training based on the Public Health Foundation's train, train the Trainer series that they had come in and trained us. Thank you, Jack. Um, so we developed the training based around that and went out and trained our staff. Um, and so you'll see that a lot, of, a lot more people over time were aware of the processes, were aware of the training, had been trained. Um, and, and, and realize the need for certain things, such as allocating resources to quality improvement. Next slide. So, a lot of you all will see this when you first mention, okay, performance management, quality improvement. What do you guys think about this as a staff? Typical first reaction is fear and loathing, confusion, and disinterest. Um, that's a common reaction to fear and loathing because people fear things that they view as a threat to their job stability. And sometimes performance management is presented as something that has to do with your job stability. Your job depends on this. Um, when it's presented in that light, it's really hard to get people to buy into it because people won't want to point out any opportunities for improvement because they feel that it's a threat to their, their job security. Or some people feel like it's more work. You're just asking us to do this and it's going to generate more work for us. Or it's not really going to change anything. We've tried to do this before. We've tried to improve. Nothing different is going to happen. Um, that typically is caused by poor understanding of what quality improvement, what 
performance management is. We tied this into accreditation, so we understood that this is what uh, this is coming from. Or lack of awareness and need for it. People don't understand the purpose, the value of it. It's hard for them to buy into it. Or people, you know, may just be disinterested. They can't see the connection between what they do and the, the performance management, accreditation quality improvement, the what's in it for me, then they typically won't be as engaged. Um, or there might be the expectation, which can be real or perceived, that there isn't enough high-level support. Maybe leadership, staff feel leadership won't really back them if they try to engage in this, so they won't actually put any effort towards it. That's why I love that Tammy and Jack put so much emphasis on leadership uh, involvement. Next slide, please. So how do you address these things? When you have fear and loathing, confusion, disinterest, how do you address these? So our plan was to address each one of these individual reactions uh, with some very specific targeted um, activities. For fear and loathing, we wanted to stress the value of grassroots ownerships. Hey, staff, this is your thing. This affects you. This is not just some top-down thing where the director is telling you you have to do it. Now, director buying in and support is important, but just mandating stuff across the top from the top down typically doesn't generate long-term buy-in and, and, and value. Uh, so we, were, we didn't want it to make it a mandatory thing. We wanted to make it a, look like something that you get to participate in instead of something that you have to participate in. Um, confusion, we address that by training. You know, go out, educate people. This is what performance management is. This is what performance management is not. This is what QI is, this is what QI is not. And provide some examples of successful projects, internally and externally. Um, and disinterest, another thing, you address that by educating. Educate your staff on exactly what it is. And like I said earlier, you have to know exactly what, how you want them to feel about it. Understand what your brand of QI, what your brand of performance management is, so that when you go and train them and teach them, you'll have that in mind and everybody will understand the brand the same way. If not, people will develop their own brand and it may be negative. Um, and you want to stress the leadership role. Help leadership understand what their role is in performance management QI. Help staff understand what the leadership role is and provide successful examples. People love to see uh, wins. So if you can show some wins, then you'll generate a lot more buy-in. Next slide, please. So after generating kind of the, the buy-in, kind of getting, developing what our brand of performance management quality improvement accreditation is and going out and training folks, we had to also figure out what resources are we going to use to be able to keep this tracked over time. Uh, and I'd like to take some time to, uh, to acknowledge the Office of Performance Management um, and, and some folks in the director's office uh, for actually uh, making sure that we have very good resources to be able to track our performance. Um, Devin Bradbury, who, who pretty much heads up our performance management system, does a great job with this. So. We had two resources that we thought uh, we'd like to share with you all because they may be useful. Uh, Clipfolio is an internal central tracking tool that we use internally to track performance management, performance measures. And um, I'll show you some examples of that um, later on in the presentation. We are um, right now in the process of shifting towards the Health and Communities Institute tool, uh, which will allow us a greater degree of collaboration with our community partners and allow us to to put our performance measures and our performance management system um, to be more externally facing so that the community can feel more involved and engaged in what we're doing around performance management and quality improvement. Next slide, please. So Clipfolio, it's an online dashboarding system. This is something you can look into if you're looking for a way to track performance management. Um, I don't work for Clipfolio, nor do I sell products for them, but it is a tool that we found useful, and I'll tell you why we found it useful. Um, when we initially started with our Clipfolio dashboard, we started a lot with like a lot of counting measures. We're counting widgets, we're counting dollars, counting people saying, things like that. Um, as we got a bigger, uh, a better grasp and handle on what, it, what performance management is, um, we began to develop more sophisticated measures. We added our strategic plan and chip objectives later. Next slide, please. 
So with Clipfolio, some of the advantages that we saw and why we used it for so long is that it was user-friendly. It didn't really require a lot of technical expertise. You didn't have to have a P an, an IT degree to be able to run it. Um, it was pretty affordable, $20 a month uh, per user, and it didn't require much storage space. Um, and it was flexible. We could modify it as we wanted to in-house. We could add and take away things as we deemed necessary. Um, so it may be good for somebody with a department that doesn't have a lot of IT or funds to just throw at a performance management system. Um, next, please. And these are just some screenshots of some of the things that uh, we were able to put into there. I won't go into detail. These are some dummy screens with some dummy data. Uh, we have general fund revenue in here, some indirect cost revenue, parking revenue, um, expenditures, vacancies. Next slide, please. And then we track things uh, such as disease surveillance statistics, environmental health, um, inspections, um, number of inspections that were out past due. Uh, track things like outbreaks, um, direct observe, observe therapy for um, STD and TB patients, pool inspections. Next slide, please. So there are a number of different ways you can graph and display your data. This is one of the coolest ones because we were even able to track our um, social media presence, how many Facebook users were daily were engaged daily, how many um, Facebook hits we had, where people were hitting from. It looks like we have a pretty good uh, presence in the Philippines for some reason. Uh, a lot of people from Quezon City and in Manila, Manila like to come to the Houston Health Department Facebook, so we're pretty proud of that. Next slide, please. Um, and I'll show you uh, what we're moving to just kind of wrap us up. Um, we're moving towards the Healthy Community Institute. It's a web-based platform. This allows a great collaboration with external partners around performance management um, type activities and initiatives. And this is great for, um, we think, for um, kind of rallying the troops in your, your organizations that you have to work with with your community health improvement plan. So it's accessible to the community. They can go to a website and see exactly what the health indicators look like, what our performance management, what our measures and uh, our progress looks like. It'll be updated on a regular basis, and it includes population data and health indicators. And you can kind of customize this. It'll just enhance that community partnership piece around performance management. Next slide. And the website is not up yet. It's not uh, fully launched yet. We're making some changes, but it's close. But I did want to show you a couple of screenshots of the type of stuff that will be on that website. Um, we'll show data, have data reports, indicators, whatever type of indicators we want to look at, whether they relate to CHIP or just population health indicators. And we can track our process, look at demographic data, find any health data. And, and the community will be able to go here and look at that as well. Um, next slide, please. And here's just another screenshot. We wanted to look at um, families living below poverty level. We could track all of the counties in this area that provide the data and um, track all the zip codes in our county that provide the data and be able to look at exactly what, what the uh, state of our health as far as poverty is concerned. So we're excited about this new tool because we believe it will be a really good link between performance management, um, community, uh, really give us a, a, a good vehicle for engaging our community and making them feel involved. Ultimately, everything we do for performance management all the way up is based on one objective, and that's improving the health of the communities that we serve. So the better we get at understanding uh, performance management, quality improvement, accreditation, how our staff feels about that, tap into it and show them the link between what they do and what the value is, performance management, the better outcomes we will have ultimately. And I think Tammy did a good job of kind of showing that, that flow from internal performance management to uh, accomplishing uh, community-wide uh, objectives. Next slide, please. Just another quick um, screenshot of, our, of, our, of the dashboard section of that um, Health and Communities website. So um, all kinds of health indicators, just anything you feel like putting on there is very flexible. Um, it will allow you to, to do that. Next slide, please. 
Robert, this is this is Michaela. I do want to jump in real quickly and just uh, say we we have um, reached uh, one o'clock Eastern time, um, and we are planning to continue on with the webinar for probably an extra ten minutes um, due to the technical difficulties that we experienced uh, initially with the webinar. So hopefully you'll be able to stay. If not, we will be sending a link of the archive webinar and uh, the questions and answers that we uh, will go over following uh, uh, Robert's presentation, we'll be sending all of that out to the participants of the webinar. So um, if you do have to leave us, thank you for joining us. Robert, sorry for interrupting. Continue. No problem. No problem. I have one more slide. Um, just want to say our lessons learned. Uh, you need a strategy, not just steps. You have to understand, in order to get that strategy, you have to understand where your department is, what the perception of performance management and quality improvement is. Develop a strategy to attack those perceptions or attack those uh, different areas that you need to attack in order to be able to kind of build that performance management uh, uh, culture. You have to brand in a way that's appealing to your staff and use tools that make tracking easy and, and reporting because there's nothing uh, worse than, than trying to do a good job with tracking performance and data and having a tool that does not make it easy to do because ultimately it causes the system to fail. Um, so I hope I've been able to give you guys some ideas of where to start, um, some potential tools you can start to look at and be able to really get to that performance management QI culture in your department. Uh, thank you all and um, hopefully I didn't keep you too long. Thank you so much again, Robert, and thank you to all of our panelists. Um, for really fantastic presentations. I think um, the, the complementary uh, kind of themes among the presentations really provides a, a nice uh, picture of, of how folks can keep performance management fresh and, um, and all that. So we, we really appreciate your time and, uh, and your being here with us today. So uh, it is time for questions and comments. They, uh, we have been receiving questions from attendees uh, throughout the webinar, so um, we will uh, get started. But please, if you, if you do have questions that you haven't already submitted, use the, um, the chat box, as Vanessa mentioned earlier. Please use the chat box to submit your questions, and we will field them and respond to them as they come in. So the first question is for Jack. Um, Jack, we've had a couple of questions come in about strategic measures, and particularly about strategic measures uh, as compared to grant measures. Could you speak a little bit to, to that? Yeah, many times what we run into is that the grant measures, what the grant maker wants, do not align to the strategic plan. So many times what we have to do is really distinguish between measures the department or division may be doing that do not relate to the strategic plan. So there may be some things in the grant that's more specific just to the grant and not to the overall strategic plan. So that's where we come up with the strategic measures, which are the aligned measures, and grant measures, which may not be. Great. Thank you so much. Um, another question that's come in here is about the performance management and quality improvement self-assessment that was used um, by Robert at the, uh, the, the Houston Health Department. Um, could you give us a little more uh, specific information about that, Robert? Yes. So um, Public Health Foundation developed the, the, the turning point model for performance management, um, and there's an assessment that, put, that is available on the Public Health Foundation website. Um, that, that you can use that will actually walk your department through uh, the different um, components of that turning point model of performance management. So there's a performance uh, measures, performance standards, uh, reporting of progress, QI, and the quality improvement section, all an overall performance management section built into this assessment. It's a really good tool. Um, uh, it's a good way to get a quick baseline. It's, it's not too, too long. Um, but it, it really does, uh, I think it's uh, substantial, the information that you get. Um, what we did was convert that to a SurveyMonkey format and sent that to our staff and did kind of a snowball survey throughout the department. So if you do have a SurveyMonkey account, um, a, a SurveyMonkey Pro account, and you're interested in that tool, you can shoot me an email, and um, I'll make sure that I can 
send that tool to you. We also added a couple of sections. We added a section to figure out um, how our staff felt about accreditation, so our accreditation preparedness and readiness as well. So if you'd like that, just give me an email and I can send that to you. Thank you. The next question that came in is for Tammy. Uh, Tammy, what is your Aspire survey? Um, is it uh, with regards to staff satisfaction or something else? The Aspire survey is uh, the survey that we just did with our staff and our Board of Health. So the questions were essentially very similar, just tailored to each group. And it was customer satisfaction along with um, delving into the SWOT, like where do you, what are our challenges right now in the next year? and out three years, five years, et cetera, and then also um, identifying succession planning and what each of the groups felt about that. So then we pulled those results together and we presented them to see um, where the staff was, where the Board of Health was, and noting any differences there. And there really weren't a lot of differences, but um, it was good to see that um, comparison. Great. Thanks so much. Um, the next question that came in is, um, I, I believe for, well, we'll see who wants to field this one, but the, the question is, at what level do you recommend measuring and uh, or at what ratio, for example, do you focus your energy on program level measures or system level measures? Uh, agency level measures, a mixture of all of them? Uh, seems like it could be right up Jack's uh, alley to, to start. Jack, if you want to take a stab at that. Yeah, usually what you want to do is make sure the measures roll up. So when you start at the lowest level, you make sure that those measures will roll up to the department or the program level, to the division level, and so forth. So when you get up to the strategic level, whatever your measure is up there, you can look back down and see at the various program levels, at the lowest levels, where the measures align. Because if they don't, you know, you don't get any roll-up, and roll-up is really the most important part of the process. So you really want to start at the lowest level and start moving up through the process till you get to the strategic level. This is Tammy, and I'll just um, echo that with saying that one thing that we found useful for our staff was to several years ago go around and have everybody say what it is they do and how it relates to our strategic plan and our community um, health improvement plan so that everybody could see how the work that they did every day relates to those two things because otherwise we we're kind of getting that people kind of felt that they didn't see that direct connection and that really seemed to help us especially with the the siloed program areas great thanks so much um, we do have one other question here about um, the staffing numbers and positions at the departments. I, I think you may have uh, sp spoken to that um, in your presentations, both uh, Tammy and Robert. So I just want to remind folks that uh, the answers to some of your questions can be found if you download the slides, um, and you might you might see the answers to some of these uh, these questions that were already discussed. Just a reminder to folks that 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 slide set is available. Um, so thank you again to all of our presenters. I, I don't want to keep folks too long, so um, I would like to say uh, next slide, and we'll get to the conclusion of the of the webinar and uh, and let everyone go on their way. Um, we wanted to remind everyone that PHF provides a wide range of resources and services in the areas of performance management, quality improvement, and workforce development. This includes uh, technical assistance and training, and our learning resource center where you can find and print materials. Uh, the train learning management network and the linkages with academic practice the um, uh, academic practice linkages it's uh, all on this slide if you have any other information you can um, email um, me Michaela Kershey M Kershey at phf.org or um, anyone else uh, that um, that Jack or anyone else that uh, uh, at, at PHF next slide please 
And last but not least, um, and actually Robert sort of uh, spoke, to, spoke to this a little bit, but PHF has a variety of performance management resources, um, most of which or all of which can be found in the Performance Management Toolkit. The URL is found uh, right there in front of you. You can't click on it in the, uh, the, in the webinar, but again, if you download those slides, it is a clickable link, um, and uh, you'll see uh, a whole bunch of performance management resources that are organized in various ways so that um, you can find what you're looking for um, hopefully pretty easily. We also have the, the public health import I'm sorry, the Public Health Improvement Resource Center, um, which uh, is a searchable um, uh, database of resources uh, that has performance management and quality improvement uh, resources that could be very helpful to folks who are looking to improve the improvement. We have new QI tools that have just come out. Again, please uh, download the slides. Those are click clickable links for you. Um, and we provide on-site services for performance improvement. You can subscribe to the Performance Improvement Inside Track, which is our newsletter about uh, performance improvement services and uh, what PHF is up to um, in that area. So thanks to everyone for participating in today's webinar, for bearing with us as we uh, tried to mitigate some of those, uh, those technical issues. We were really glad to have you. Thanks to our wonderful speakers again. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to working with everyone as their uh, journeys in performance uh, management continue. Thanks so much.